Welcome, Welcome to the Moto Marketing Podcast, presented by Racer X, the podcast for moto industry professionals, entrepreneurs, and riders. If you want to grow your brand and business in today's digital first world, you have to know how to turn a stranger into a fan, turn a like into a customer. You have to know how to turn attention into dollars. This podcast is dedicated to keeping you in the know on real marketing tactics that work in the moto world so that you grow your business and help grow the sport. Get ready to learn from the very same marketing experts trusted by Racer X, Lucas Oil Pro Motocross, GNCC, and NBC Sports. They'll help you navigate the world of digital marketing for your moto brand. This is the Moto Marketing Podcast. Podcast. Presented by Racer X. What's up, everybody? Welcome back to another episode of the Moto Marketing Podcast. Hey, we're getting into the holidays, um, so we're going to bring you some special content um, over the next few weeks. We've already started dropping some of it. Uh, before we dive into today's episode, want to remind you to go check out racerxonline.com forward slash moto marketing, and you can always see the most uh, current subscription. At the time of this podcast, you can get... Um, Three bonus gifts included in your subscription, um, exclusive 2022 Racer X calendar, uh, $25 Rocky Mountain ATV MC gift card. You obviously get 12 issues of the digital. Um, you get a gift subscription for a friend as well, and you get the uh, the 12 print issues as well. So um, an awesome bundle, and you can always see what the current bundle is again at racerxonline.com forward slash Moto marketing. A um, couple things. Want to give. I'm trying to do more of this, especially during the holidays. But a quick moto marketing quick tip. Just some things that we're seeing here at Impact Results for our clients that I think would help you guys listening as well. Um, everybody always asks questions about Facebook ads, Instagram ads, but something that I think gets overlooked a lot uh, are Google Shopping um, campaigns and Google Shopping ads. Um, in short, when you Google a product and you see the uh, the pro image of the product at the very top of the Google search and the price and you click on it and it takes you to that person's website, they're doing Google Shopping ads. So if it's not something you've jumped on, look into it. You're welcome to shoot me an email and ask us questions. Uh, and if we can help you get that set up, we'd love to do it. Email is luke at thinkimpact, impact with a K, luke at thinkimpact.com. Um, last thing before we dive in. Um, call to action for, we're, we're working on a project um, that I can't really say much about, but I'm looking for content creators. Someone like our guest today, um, uh, vloggers, um, filmers in the moto space. If you have an interest in working with athletes, um, we're working on something that might present an opportunity for more filmers to create content for people like AJ Catanzaro um, and his filmer cam. So we're trying to open up something. We're working on a little project with a company that you guys uh, know of and we'll be able to say more soon, but please shoot me an email or hit me on Instagram if you're a content creator uh, and you're looking to be able to get into the moto industry and utilize your skills we might have something coming that would be an opportunity for you. All right, so our guest today, somebody that you've heard from, I think this is his third appearance on the show. We always look for an excuse to have him back on, and I think we've got one that will be very helpful in your content planning strategy moving into the 2022 year. We've got Tyler Pierce, the vegan cyclist, uh, joining us once again today. Man, you always uh, – put up the biggest numbers for our show. I think I've sent that to you before. You always have the most downloads, and I think it's awesome. So I'm pumped to have you back on today. Well, I, I appreciate it. Uh, if, if you don't know anything about me, I'm a huge Moto fan. So I'm trying to sneak my way into the Moto community. <laughs> I couldn't make it as a pro racer. I couldn't make it as a, as a motorcycle shop owner. Uh, and so I had to take this weird route through cycling to then snake my way back into moto. <laughs> yeah. I've seen you and your son are starting to do, uh, you've been doing some, some more moto this year, which is cool. Um, yeah, man, I, I want to, uh, I want to ride as, I mean, dude, that's the dream is to like, wake up, get on a moto and, and ride and then go to bed. <laughs> like that's, that's all I want to do is just ride motos. Yeah. And so me and him have been going out we just went out and, and raced uh our little friday night series at little oki which is the longest running motorcycle track in the nation uh and my boy got his first win and it was awesome. just crazy the confidence like i've never seen him so aggressive and just it changes his personality it's weird how motos can do that how you know it puts you in this position where you're like you're on the start line the revs are up every your heart's through the roof and you have a choice to like 
pin it and go for that whole shot or you know be passive and just let everyone go yeah and i think that when you have that flip of a switch of like i'm going for it dude that changes your whole look on life in general yeah i agree i agree 100 percent. there's a lot that can be learned and applied to running a business or being a, a solid uh, employee or a husband or whatever it is from from all things two wheel man you haven't had much going on this year i know you just kind of been hanging out not really anything happening <laughs> um yeah, I, the, the I, busiest <laughs> the busiest year uh of, of your life of my life um you know definitely i've had like three complete burnouts you know like just these waves of uh and so what i'd like to talk about today and, and what we were chatting on on instagram about is you know the value or, or, or like the production cost of content and so yeah. this year I, I was able to do uh, a series called the impossible route uh high budget big production you know team like hundreds of hours in the edit uh and what that cost was versus just the regular YouTube videos um, that cost me nothing to put out. I think it's a really interesting contrast and pretty frustrating, to be honest. Like, so the Death Valley video that we did, um, I'm very proud of it. It's it's a it's a it's a legacy piece to me. Like, it, it, I feel like if nothing else in my life ever gets recognized, like I'm happy that I created that film. But it cost us close to forty grand um, to do that. And that's like the shoestring budget, right? Like yeah. I didn't get paid anything. Uh, Jeremiah didn't get paid anything. Like we only paid, you know, uh, our videographer, we gas, food, you know, support. I mean, anyway, so like if I had gotten paid the hourly rate for editing um, and every, I mean, it would have been close to $100,000 to produce that one video. So then contrast that to like, just whatever uh this gravel locos video i did this year um where it was just a gopro on my stem and i voiced it over right so i race the race i have gopro footage then i sit down and i just talk into a mic over the over the footage they basically did the same amount of views mm -hmm. you know like the impact and and if not more people uh liked the gravel locos video because it was easier to digest yeah uh, and i think that like now with TikTok or reels where dude the attention span is just getting so short yeah. it's like dude i have 10 seconds for your content <laughs> you know uh and and so when something is like hyper polished and hyper produced you sort of have to be in like the right mindset to digest that content and so sometimes if you're like, hey, uh, let's make something super awesome. Let's make this great edit. It's going to cost us a ton of money. And then it doesn't perform the way you think it's going to perform. Sometimes that comes down to that you made it too good. Yeah. You, you know what I mean? And so like, look at the TikTok stuff that goes viral. It's like some guy in a dirty kitchen and he like kind of dances for three seconds and it's like 8 million views. And you're like, what the shit is this, dude? And so how much did he spend on that content? Yeah. A zero. Well, and, you know? and honestly, it's something that I've noticed, and we've been experimenting with TikTok ads for some of our clients, and I I have this obsession with TikTok. My, my wife and I watch it every night before we go to bed. It's the last thing we do before we sh close our eyes is watch funny TikToks. What I've noticed, the ads that we watch and don't even realize we're watching an ad are the ones that are low production. It looks like another TikTok. The ads that I swipe right over, like right now, uh, Caesars, like the, the casino in Vegas, they're, they have this big push trying to get people to sign up for their gambling platform. Their ads are super high polish. I know it's an ad, I swipe right past it. The ads that I watch and I consume almost look, what well, they do look like content. They're very, they might, they're low budget, I'm sure they still cost money, but they're strategically, they look organic. Um, and I think that kind of plays off of what what you're talking about as well totally uh well because it sort of sneaks in past your eyes right we're so trained to look for a commercial um and then there's just this there's just this style right which is it, you you grow up seeing commercials and you're like oh that's big time and so then you want to make it big time so then you just follow that same style yep. uh if we, we refer that to moto bro i want to throw scrubs and bang off the rev limiter all day long <laughs> That doesn't make me any faster, right? If not, I'm probably slower because I'm over revving the bike and I'm wasting energy trying to throw a scrub when it's like, 
um, God, I think it was Jay Z that said this. He's like, everyone's emulating the result. They're not emulating what it took to get it. Mm -hmm. Right. And so like James Stewart, he's, he scrubbed out of necessity. Like he was going so fast. He's like, how do I go even faster? And, but now everyone just sees that and they're like, all I want to do is that. And so they're not really actually uh, doing the work to get to where that makes, that pays off. So yeah, like when you, you do a big film or a big production or a, or a commercial and you're like, oh, I want to get that red camera. I want that like blurry background. I want this butter smooth audio but there's no story. There's nothing behind it. There's no uh, emotion. And so like one of the things is, you know, these films that I've created, there's three up on YouTube, Death Valley, uh, Virginia, and then Montana. Those like it, the edit, I, I, it's all me. And it's just on a computer with Adobe Premiere with very limited skills. Um, all I'm doing is I'm, you know, we paid to get good footage which a lot of times we don't even use, which is so crazy. Again, this goes back to what I want to talk about is like, like we paid this one guy 12 grand uh, in the Death Valley video to, you know, to get these shots. And dude, he was amazing. He was a true professional, had all the gear. But when I got into the edit, his beautiful locked off shots, they were necessary occasionally. But what I found was that our GoPro, our shaky GoPro handheld, like yeah. dust everywhere, like wind noise, dude, that, that made you feel something uh, mm -hmm. versus his polished shots didn't. And so then it, dude, it was killing me to like delete his footage, be like, I, I, I don't want to use this. Like, <laughs> and then I go to like a cell phone, like a vertical cell phone shot. And it's like, that actually tells a better story. Yeah in this in this moment um you know and so like I, I just it's so crazy to look back at the content that i've i've paid money for the impossible route series like the total it's going to be close to like a hundred grand in total budget again which is is like peanuts for some companies you know but this is just like shoestring budget type deal to create something uh versus then i think i use this analogy that i did this race against um mm -hmm uh um this bodybuilder and he it was the easiest video i've ever done i just screen recorded our zwift race and then i voiced it over and that thing did like three hundred thousand views yeah. four hundred thousand views and it's like dude that was zero dollars it was literally my laptop just screen recording um and then i talked into you know my computer yeah. like bro that's everyone has that you know so let me, I guess, let me kind of dive in because there's really, there's a couple different in the moto space. There's a couple different viewpoints that somebody could look at this at or look at this through. And that's obviously as a company trying to figure out how do we do content creation, but then something we're going to dive into here shortly, an athlete figuring out what should I do? I have clients all the time ask us, hey, can you help us with content creation? And sure we can. And we have a studio and we do some stuff for clients, but I think a big thing that clients overlook is it doesn't need to be high polish. Like when I first started my business in 2011, I was a video production business and I got paid a ridiculous amount of money to create these like high polish TV commercials that then turned into high polish internet videos. And then I started to realize what, what Tyler's saying is it, people want real organic content. This this documentary series that you've done, like the, the footage that tells the story the best is the one that like took no thought to create. It's the phone, it's the GoPro a business can do the same thing, whether you're graphics, whether you're safety products, whether you're nutrition products, like, um, you know, we work with, uh, we work with, uh, with Arma and, and the, the, the content that does the best for them is this, it's somebody that shot it on a phone talking about how they're using it, showing it like it doesn't, you don't have to overthink this stuff, nor do you need to hire a production company that charges you $80,000 to come in and create this one five minute piece that nobody wants to watch. Um, on the flip side, you've got the athlete and we'll dive into that here, here in a little bit. But I think businesses need to understand, like it takes time, but it's an, it's a necessity. If you want that content, you can't replace that time that you're going to put in creating something on your phone by hiring someone like us or another production company to shoot everything for you. There's a time and a place for that. But what Tyler, what, I mean, like, what are your thoughts yeah, on that? So, so, trying to figure okay, that out. So there's a, a sponsor of the impossible route 
um, who has not posted a single thing about this. Uh, they paid the money, and but they got drives like terabytes of pictures and footage uh, because that's part of the the deal. Like you, if you support this, we'll send you all the clips. So like you know, we're doing the drone shot out in the middle of Death Valley. Like you didn't have to go out there and set up that shot. We did it for you. They have not shared or used any of that content, period. And I talked to them at Sea Otter and I was like, hey, I don't understand. Like you're not really getting the most out of this relationship. And they were like, we want our content to be perfect. We won't make a post until it is signed off by 10 different people. It, it's, it's curated, you know, and I was like, dude, that's not the way to do it. Yeah. Uh, They're talking you, you to a guy mis- that literally built this massive social following by doing the exact opposite of what they say their process is. <laughs> yeah. I, I mean, like quality is great, but like at a certain point as a company, this would be my biggest recommendation is, is get people to just tag you in anything, right? Their Instagram posts, their stories, and just reshare that shit instantly Mm -hmm. like you don't have to think about it because they're already making the content for you they're making it low budget they're making it organic just reshare that like you already have an army of people out there or there that's the goal right so if that's if you're a brand and you hit up 20 different people and you're like hey i'll send you some free product i'd like for you to tag me in anything that remotely result you know resembles our product and it doesn't have to be like a picture of the product. It can just be someone riding. Uh, and, and so if it's like, whatever, it's Arma, you know, if someone's riding and they tag that that sponsor in the Instagram story, then that in, that the, the company can just put that on their story. Right. And so now you're, you've got content to share for no work, for zero input, zero time. And so let everyone else do it for you the only hurdle to get over is that maybe some of it is not that great. It doesn't really matter. Yep. People are going to skip over the stuff they don't want to watch. They're not going to unfollow because you you put up a kind of a blurry, shaky video. It doesn't really matter, right? right. Yeah, I think what really, Tyler, what you just explained is how these moto industry brands that have sponsorship opportunities for amateur athletes how it needs to be structured they sponsor house and then hook it these they've been around forever and you get the you know these amateur athletes get these discounts and now i feel and i think you just painted the picture the the reason they should get those isn't because they have the best result none of that matters what you need to crack down on is what they're make it very clear what you as a brand your expectations are for that athlete whether he's six or he's 36 or he's 56 the expectation is hey we would like this much content um you know, per year uh, or whatever it is, just make sure that they understand what you want from them. We we do uh, my e bike team. We do a lot of work with specialized bicycles, and they have an ambassador program, and they're really good. About once a month, they'll send out an email uh, and say, "Hey, this is what we're trying to push this this month. Show us how you get out and ride in your community. Show us how you know uh, what's in your gear bag when you're going to the local trails." And they're doing that because they want their army of ambassadors to put out real organic content. I feel like there's so many brands that have these sponsorship opportunities, but they don't even tell the ambassador what they want them to do content wise. So Tyler really just spelled that out for you. (laughs) Totally. And so one, one of the other things is that a brand should understand the value of exposure for a small up and coming athlete, right? So everyone's thinking, oh, well, they only want free product. And that's great. But if you share the people that are supporting your product, they're stoked on that. Right. And and then you're giving them a platform and and then you're creating a relationship. So one of the things that I look for when I work with a brand is a relationship versus a, you know, just a quick, dirty, like, hey, here's here's the script. Here's what we want you to do. It's it's a one time deal. I don't want that, man. I want like with Elio. They're my uh, cycling, you know, kit company. Um, dude, the relationship between us is so good. Like I'm, I'm talking with them all the time. They're sharing anything that I have going on. Um, and so, you know, I have this kid, Travis, that, that I hired to work with me. And, and so now I'm sort of seeing what someone who, he only has like 2,500 followers, right? He's just kind of starting to create a brand. Like he's sort of figuring this out. And so now I'm, I'm watching what matters to him. 
And he told me, he was like, well, I'm not going to tag them because they've never once shared one of my posts. Yeah. They've never once reshared my story. And, I, and, and they were giving him free product, but they didn't have a relationship with him. And he was like, well, I don't, well, I don't want to tag him anymore. And I was like, oh, that's so interesting. You know what I mean? That them resharing his stories was more important than the free product. Yeah, no doubt. Yeah, I think uh, it's such an interesting, certain content creators get it. And when I say content creators, I'm talking about amateur athletes that are looking for sponsorships. Some of them get it. I really try to make sure that people on our, our, our e-bike team understand the value. And I've seen what you're talking about happen in real life. They get so stoked when hand up gloves or arma or specialized or michelin will share their post or even better yet they they i've seen michelin use um a couple of our amateur a, a, a 46 year old you know uh guy like a normal guy on our team use it in a michelin ad and he got so stoked and it was a piece of content that he created that makes them want to do more. Um, but I do think the brands need to make it clear that like you just said, Hey, we want to have this type of a relationship with you. This is what we expect. This is how we're going to help you in exchange for discount or free gear, whatever it is. Before we went live, you, you and I were talking a little bit about some of the changes that have happened this silly season. I think this is the most exciting silly season we've seen in, in five to 10 years, maybe. I mean, there's a lot of changes going on. Um, and we're also seeing a lot of content being created with bigger names. It's not just uh, AJ Catanzaro and Seven Deuce Deuce anymore. It's, you know, you've got Adam Censorillo putting content out. Um, uh, Plessinger just went to Red Bull KTM and, you you know, you were talking about the piece that he put out with that. Let's talk about the athlete side of things. What What are some of your thoughts with 2021, 2022, and some of the bigger name athletes that are out there. Where are they missing the mark? Who's doing it right? Well, so what I think sucks is that you've spent your whole life becoming so good at this one thing. And then now they're like, hey, you also now need to be a content creator. Uh, you also need a personality. And, and and that's becoming more and more of the value of a rider. And when, you know, I've never obviously sat down for a contract negotiation at that level, but like, I'm sure that if you came and said, Hey, here's my, here's my following. Here's what I'm doing. Um, that the, the money that you could get out of that could, could rival your win bonuses. Right. I mean, because that's the whole thing, right? It's like, Hey, you, we want to put our product out there. We want to put our brand out there. And if, look, if you're not winning, um, then you got to do something else. <laughs> and uh, there's about a handful of people that are going to be, you know, up there winning. And like, Eli, I don't, it, so it's like this, you know, like hot girls never have a good personality because they've never had to develop it, right? They just, they've always kind of floated through life. And it's like, it's not that big of a deal. You've never been put in a situation like, people that are funny usually became, they were never popular. So they, they had to work on that aspect. I feel like Eli Tomac has always been so good. He's never had to deal with any of the social side, Yeah. but dude, I want to see everything he's doing. Like, let me just, let me just do stick a phone, live stream your Cortez practice sessions. I would watch that all day, you know? And so also the moto community or the, the sport itself has a real issue with people caring about the riders, right? Um, because it's the storylines are usually just the front two or three. Um, but dude, there's so many stories. And if you understand the guy who just barely made the night show and he's running around in 18th, right. like, dude, he's never going to get a you know TV spot. But that's like maybe one of the more interesting stories of the night. Yeah. And so yeah. if these riders can put themselves out there a little more and, and, and show their, their vulnerability. Um, and I know there's a couple like rider vlogs and stuff out there that people are trying to do it, but dude, I think that Feld should put out the money to do these like, uh, MMA, like UFC, yeah. where they do these, I you know, agree. behind the scenes, yeah. these hype videos Dude, do that every week. Yeah. And Red Bull does a freaking phenomenal job with like, you know, those, those like recaps and those series, uh, they're so good, but Feld should be putting the money into that. They yeah. should be promoting the riders. And every week they should really dive into another rider's story. Um, and I know they kind of try to do it, but they got to do it better. Well, I think something that's interesting too, uh, 
whenever we talk about content, everybody immediately goes to, oh, that means vlog, and that means YouTube, and that means shoot, and that means edit. And yes, that's obviously one of the most popular mediums. But if we look at someone like Plessinger, I don't think Aaron, I don't even know if Aaron has uh, a YouTube channel. He's one of the most popular riders. Why? Well, up until this year, it sure as hell was not because of his result in the big bike class. He almost got forgotten about, but then when he started to become really popular, what was it from? It was from what he was putting out on Instagram. It was from his his his, his car karaoke where he's just ripping like five country songs at a time, and then he starts to grow his mullet out, and the only reason you see that is because he's putting it on Instagram. So it doesn't always have to be, I got to film, I got to edit, I got to upload X amount of times per month. Aaron has built this massive fan base because he shows his personality, yes, at the races, and when he gets on the podium, you get, you get like the most epic podium interviews ever but man he's just sharing his life from him singing his favorite country song on the way from the practice track to how pissed off he is after a race he's just putting out 15 second pieces of content or a photo on instagram i think that's something that is overlooked to where people are like i don't got time for the youtube thing i would argue make time but it, dude it takes no time to do what aaron's done on on instagram so what what are your thoughts on that yeah, more so than just so the vlog <clears throat> So, I mean, like Instagram story is such an easy way to just for any rider to, to engage with the fans. Um, and like, so one of the big reasons why Aaron and uh, Adam are so popular is that they are out there, you, yeah. that you've seen them um, talk about their emotions and, you know, you've seen their highs and their lows and, and dude, for sure, after a super cross race, like, I don't know, I have no idea what that feels like to get pipped at the line by Cooper Webb for the hundredth time. Um, but like, I want to know what your feelings are, Ken, like, dude, post something on the story right after that. I know it, it sucks, but everyone's going to connect with you in such a deeper level. Um, you know, like dude, Eli, when his pants got torn off, bro, that should have been a yeah. running PR campaign yeah. for months. Like, dude, you know, like, I want to know everything about you rode around with your pants off. You pulled off to the side of the track and were buckling like, bro, that <laughs> tell me more about yeah. that. You know what I mean? Like that, that was, that was huge. And so these, I think these pro athletes though, and it's changing a little bit. Like Ricky Carmichael talks about in the time of, of Chad and, and James, where they would never talk to each other. Everything was super, super secret. And now with all the riding facilities, it's, it's not so much that way, but man, let, let that emotion shine. Like, and being vulnerable is uncomfortable, but right. that's how you get people to connect with you. And so like, I'm not anything special on an athlete side whatsoever, but I think that what, what has allowed me to have some success is me explaining how I'm feeling in real time, despite how that's going to make me look. Yeah. I don't think, you know, cause I get a lot of shit about being vegan and I'm weak and I make excuses, whatever. Like there's going to be some negative you know, blowback on that. Cause there's some people that only want to watch winners and that's it, dude. Uh, but way more people want to, want to connect. And when I talk about, I don't know, having issues like connecting with my son because he's more of an introvert um, and, and just like that parenting struggle. Yeah. I mean, maybe I'm opening myself up a little bit online, but then people are like, Oh, this guy, he's like me um, or, or whatever. So yeah, open up that, open up the emotions, man. Let, yeah. Let's see it. Let's see it all. Do you think, well, actually I want to, <clears throat> I want to ask this question instead. Um, somebody that I'm interested to get your thoughts on, um, he's been in the, the, the news and the moto space a lot lately has been, uh, Hayden Deegan and, and what really, you know, Brian and, and Hayden and all of them. So he, he signs this big deal with star. Um, I think he, you know, we're obviously, I think two years out from him being in the pro ranks. I, he's already changed the sport in my opinion, as far as like what people are trying, you know, paying attention to as far as, Hey, we need to do more of what the Deegan family is doing. What do you think about what he's doing? And as he progresses and gets closer to the pro ranks and then he's in the pro ranks and he's obviously not going to stop doing what he's doing. He's going to show an inside look to a team that nobody's ever seen. What do you, what do you think about what the Deegan family has done and what they're going to continue to do? It's so jealous. Uh, <laughs> they, they are changing the game just as James did, just as Ricky did. Yeah, I, I mean, I, I'm comparison. talking like, people have come into this sport and they change it 
in in a certain way right so like uh jerry mcgrath came in and was super smooth super consistent uh had this like great persona for pr really showed how to like make success in supercross then ricky came in and he showed hey you can't do lines of cocaine and drink beer after the race like you have to train and then he changed the game with this training persona right and then stewart came in and was just like the speed was unbelievable right uh dungy comes in and he changes the game with just like being consistent anyways the deegan family they've shown how to build a brand from day one mm-hmm. and they, like the the content around that team is changing everything i think that that's going to be the new normal is that you need this this years of content before you hit the pros right people need to know who you are before you even stepped on that stage and so the hype around him right now is like unbelievable because of what he's shown since he was what four yeah right i mean the the kids doing doing shit on a moto at four five six and everyone has saw that and so then now he's coming in with this freight train of of hype uh but also dude he's he's backing it up yeah. you know what i mean yeah. so i i think a lot of people have that hype um and then they never are able to do much with it but yeah i think he's changing the game and how content is created and how important that is you know for the pros i, I think we'll see i mean there's always the question how do we get new people introduced into the sport well youtube is a damn good way but you can't just have just anybody do it i mean there are people that never have touched a motorcycle that follow hayden whether they're a you know 16 year old 15 year old girl that thinks he's cute or whatever i mean he's bringing new eyeballs to the sport and as he gets into the pro ranks you know if we don't think that you're going to get new viewers on supercross when hayden does his first race we're crazy because he's got he's got such a widespread audience that stretches beyond uh moto um well, partially because his sister at, and look at loretta lens yeah loretta yeah 100 you, if you watch the watch time yes it's like when he's racing it was all time <laughs> there's highs. 15 yeah, yeah there's 15 viewers until his heat and then there's thousands yeah it's right nuts. i mean the, the chat is just when is he racing when is he racing <laughs> yeah, when is he yeah racing? exactly i mean that's i think that's they, it they they've They've put a model out there that is uh, that you can replicate as well. We're, we're talking about not high production, but at the same time, well, I'll, I'll, I'll talk about this though. Is that when you look at it, you just assume that they're raking in the money yeah. um, and that everything is great. They probably lose money yeah. on the on the YouTube production yeah. and the YouTube ad revenue. Yeah, right. So because the, they're dumping the it back in. Money, Right, the amount of money that they're spending on having two, even three videographers at every event, um, all the editors that they've got going on, I mean, they've invested in that program. So it's they are most likely losing money or paying money every month to create that content. Now, what they're doing amazing job of is then selling that content to to paid sponsors. So like the YouTube ad revenue is peanuts. That you can't think, oh, I'm just gonna stick a camera i'm gonna give a guy a camera and we're gonna do this like that's it it gets expensive yeah um so either you do it yourself and you figure out the edit which is you know time consuming or you make an investment in yourself and i mean as as you grow as a writer you're already doing these investments you're paying for a coach you're you're paying for you know fuel top-notch fuel that i mean whatever like you're investing in your program you're getting an rv you're traveling invest in the content side yeah and even if that's like grabbing some random kid with a camera out of the track and go hey i'll pay you 100 bucks get some shots of me and then you take those shots and you go to fiverr and you get a five dollar edit dude you it's so easy you can do that but i just wanted to i want to mention that the what deegans are doing was it it, it's not a instant million dollar you know type revenue thing like they are having to take that content and then go and seek, you know, that sponsorship. But like, dude, Monster probably pays them an ungodly amount of money. Uh, you know, the, the relationship that whole that whole family has. But yeah, dude, but he's, to he's your point, in the game. It, it's because they've invested back. They've invested into building this clout that I mean, I've never at least since I've been into the sport, which was 2000. I've never seen people give a damn as much about where this amateur that's not even turning pro for two more years is going 
when he signed with Star Yamaha. And that's because they've invested, like you just said, into everything. So the point I was going to make, you actually made for me, like they've built the model, maybe n- not something that every amateur family can replicate to where you hire all these filmers, but the model that the Deegan family has is a model that, it, and not some, every team, if they don't replicate it, they are insane and they're missing out. I've had conversations with the guys over at Team Solitaire. They've got a good social presence. They're hilarious. They, they you know, they engage. They ask me, hey, what could we do better? And honestly, my, my answer should be back to them. Look at what the Deegans are doing and do it for your team. Invest in filmers, invest in content, invest in consistency and put that out because everybody's always like, well, how can, how can teams get more um, sponsorship? Look at the Deegans. Brian literally said on, on, I think it was Gypsy Tales, they had considered and could do their own team, a Deegan 38 team, because they have that much draw and that much desire of people wanting to work with them because of what you just said. They're investing back into it. So in my opinion, every team should be doing what the Deegans are doing as a family for their team and for their riders. Um, and I think it's going to make the team – it's not going to happen in 2022, but if a team starts doing it now, Twisted T Suzuki did this with Bogle and his like – his, you know, how hip and cool he is and seven deuce deuce and all these guys they have on that team, plus the fact that it's twisted T. Dude, I I think they could be one of the biggest teams in the paddock as far as people wanting to, to attach themselves to them. But it's just a matter of team managers and, and the people fronting the money just don't quite – I don't feel like they're there yet. I don't know. Well, I think that as the teams like – uh, star, right? I mean, that's they're more nimble. They can make choices and decisions much quicker than a corporation. Yeah. And you know, it's 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 called pissing in the soup, right? When you have too many people have to to give you the nod to like, yes, this content's good. You can't, dude. You have to. You just got to get it out there. Once, so if you're a brand or whatever, or a writer, a couple of things like must dos, right? Instagram reels is that i mean instagram even said we're no longer a photo sharing app you've got to get on the real game um that's where that's where it's growing and so like with deegan dude i love his reels his reels are like i don't know 10 seconds long it's just of him throwing a a fat whip or going through some whoops super chill easy to do the music's already in the app itself like it's so easy to create those reels but you need to be doing a reel a day or close to it uh, to continue growing on Instagram. Um, That's the future of Instagram or jump on TikTok, you know, either way. But like those, those short uh, videos, that's, that's the future. Yeah. The other thing is the brands need to put together some kind of like PDF to their, uh, to their ambassadors and explain walk the hand, walk them to what you want. And so I, I was a brand telling influencers what I would want is, Hey man, tag me in everything you do, especially stories. Um, don't make it obnoxious though. Don't put the tag across the middle of the screen, flip it vertical, like sideways, maybe even darken the color, put it up in the top right corner. Right. So that if you've got multiple sponsors that I don't feel weird sharing it, if it's like got Dunlop all over the top of it. Right. So take your sponsor tags, dude, push them off to the side. It's not that big of a deal. Um, but then the, the brand can reshare those stories really easily. Mm-hmm. Um, so state bicycle for this Red Bull event that I just went to anyone who tagged state. I mean, they were just like, they had someone on the phone, just resharing, like add a story, add a story, add a story. And so then for no money and no time, they had an Instagram story that almost recapped the event better than anyone out there with any big camera. Yeah. Yeah. It's an awesome, freaking awesome tip. If <laughs> I would pause or rewind that and listen to that again, or show it to your marketing director or whatever it is like that, that alone is a massive tip. And again, how can you get more? I don't understand why as many brands do it as they do to where they have sponsorship open for riders. And then they do zero with the discounts that they're giving these kids other than, yeah, well, they, you know, they they say, who cares what their, their resume is that they go to Loretta's and get 26. Like it doesn't matter. They don't do anything with, um, the, 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 the gear that they're giving them at a discount to get something in return. And you just gave them an awesome tip. If they just did that, um, you're going to get a ton of playtime in other people's Instagram feeds. So, um, 
Tyler, we got to wrap up, man, but I, this has been awesome. I hope everybody listened to this and pulled a couple of things from this episode that you can implement now or in your 2022 um, content strategy because, you know, Tyler's doing it himself. He knows the Moto community. He's good friends with AJ Cantanzaro. Um, like, he knows what he's talking about, both on the cycling and the Moto side of things. So please go back, listen to this. Um, check out his content. Like, he's not going to promote himself on the show because he's a modest guy, but, dude, the reason Tyler and I have become friends and I know him over the years because I was a fan of his and watch his content I reached out to him and just kind of strike strike up a relationship and I mean the stuff he puts out is incredible um it, the, the, the impossible the impossible route stuff I'm really really proud of all, uh, all the stuff those, is good the, the impossible route stuff is next level but just all your videos man like they're so engaging like I think people will enjoy it and they can get inspiration from it but the impossible route stuff is Netflix worthy in my opinion like it's a legit documentary it's awesome stuff um, awesome. dude, I appreciate you coming on. I always enjoy having these conversations. I look forward to the next one. We'll find another excuse to have you back on because they're always just good conversations. So I appreciate it, man. Dude, I, I want to do some bench racing for 2022. Like, like let's, let's, I would let's love to do that. I don't know if anybody gives a damn what my opinion is on the actual sport. I've just kind of known as like the guy that talks about business, but look, I've been a, I follow the sport religiously since I was like nine years old and I know you have as well. So let's, let's experiment with if people care or not about bench racing on this, uh, on this show, we'll, we'll do, we'll we do could, an we episode. Could wrap some, we could wrap some business into it yeah. a little bit. It would be uh no doubt. It would be solid, but, um, let's do some stuff for Supercross. We'll figure out some, some ways that we can do bench racing and uh business all mixed into one show during some Supercross stuff. Awesome. Well, Hey man, thank you so much for yeah. having me on. No worries, man. I appreciate it. Thanks Tyler. Thank you for listening to the Moto Marketing Podcast. If your goal is to get real, measurable results from your marketing that will grow your company revenue, then check out how Impact Media can get the same results that they have for Moto's most iconic brands by visiting thinkimpact.com. That's T-H-I-N-K-I-M-P-A-K-T.com. Have a marketing question that you want answered on the show? Send your questions to questions at motomarketingpodcast.com. Don't forget to rate, review, and subscribe to the podcast. And we'll catch you on the next episode of the Moto Marketing Podcast.